let's talk about ECM also known as equivalent circuit model or electrical equivalent model for batteries it's basically a map based battery modeling approach to begin with let's clear some terminologies so what is OCV IR and V OCV stands for open circuit voltage V stands for terminal voltage the difference between the two comes due to internal resistance so every cell has its own internal resistance due to ionic and electronic properties of different material so different materials will have their own resistances and cell is made up of different sub materials like anode cathode current collector separator and so on so uh, basically if you see this image on the left this shows open circuit voltage so this is a cell it has an internal resistance of 1 ohm it has a open circuit voltage of 1.5 volts that means when when you keep the circuit open what would be the voltage at the terminals so the voltage at these two terminals of the cell positive and negative is 1.5 volts now uh, if you apply current which will happen because of applying load so when you connect a load to the terminals of the battery then a current flows through the circuit and due to this current whenever a current passes through a resistor there will be a voltage drop and so is the case for internal resistance as well due to internal resistance R in there will be a voltage drop across the resistor which is equivalent to let's say 0.17 volts in this case so finally what you'll get at the terminals is open circuit voltage minus voltage drop across the resistor which is 1.5 minus 0.17 which is 1.33 volts so this is known as terminal voltage this is known as open circuit voltage you cannot measure open circuit voltage because as soon as you connect a measuring device across the terminal you basically close the circuit and hence current some minimum amount of current will definitely flow through the through the loop uh, if, if you want to know the equation we'll get back to that shortly but open circuit voltage is equals to drop across the internal resistance plus terminal voltage so open circuit voltage 1.5 is equals to drop across resistor which is 0.17 plus terminal voltage which is 1.33 if the current flowing the, through the circuit is infinitesimally small or close to zero then terminal voltage and open circuit voltage are both almost the same so I hope this clarifies open circuit voltage and terminal voltage now let's talk about ECM which is electro electrical equivalent models or equivalent circuit models of battery so there are two types of ECM models one is resistor model the second one is Thevenin these are the most commonly used ones resistor models by the way as the name suggests equivalent circuit model we are trying to replicate a battery a physical battery with the help of some electrical equivalent components like resistors voltage sources capacitors etc to make the electrical equivalent circuit behave exactly in the same way as your physical battery would and once you're able to create such circuits it's easy to test out various scenarios uh, because you don't have to physically test the cell and this is uh, one of the common methods used in simulation so uh, the rest of models as you can see consist of open circuit voltage VOC and internal resistance R0 on the other hand Thevenin models apart from resistive models also consist of additional RC branches 
so you can have multiple rc branches uh, one two three four up to five uh, typically three rc branches are more than sufficient to capture most of the dynamics we'll talk about thevenin circuits in more detail in a separate video so typical battery polarization curve is shown here uh, so another explanation about why open circuit voltage and terminal voltage differ so uh, there are various components one of them is internal resistance but to add to that there are other factors as well uh, which includes activation losses or, or charge transfer losses for anode and cathode and also the concentration uh, losses of anode and cathode so these are the three contributors major contributors uh, this plot shows voltage versus current density and you can see this flat line is open circuit voltage and then there is drop due to these three major components if we look at the right image you can see there is a reversible cell potential which we don't typically use because of safety reasons so we try and limit it to some smaller value or lower value uh, based on limiting the upper and lower cutoff voltages of the cell for example uh, in a lithium ion cell for example for instance ncm graphite cell will have a voltage window of 4.2 to 2.5 typically so coming back to this plot uh, you can see this is open circuit voltage level uh, in the first in the first initial section activation polarization dominates uh, which is due to charge transfer in the center region you can see ohmic polarization dominates which is due to this internal resistance and in the last section concentration polarization dominates which is this one uh, which accounts for diffusion resistance so this is a overall breakdown of your resistive losses if we talk about internal resistance or ohmic losses in more detail uh, it can be further broken down into various components so ir is equals to ionic resistance of electrolyte plus electronic resistance of electrode separator current corrector and terminals to understand this let's look at a typical schematic of a lithium ion battery so you can see starting from the left we have uh, current collector for cathode so this is cathode this is anode anode typically is, is uh, some form of carbon uh, uh, generally graphite uh, and cathode could be some lithium metal oxides it could be ncm lfp nca and so on so you have cathode and anode and both of these are separated by a separator it's a porous membrane which uh, doesn't allow the active materials to pass through like cathode and anode but they are porous to ionic particles like lithium ion so lithium ion can transport from this membrane left to right right to left during charge and discharge uh, and then enter these active materials on the left of uh, so this this active material also known as cathode and anode or electrode uh, there is a coating of cathode and anode on both the sides of a current collector so current collector is this layer on both these both the sides of this current collector would be a coating of this active material or cathode so uh, in case of cathode it's aluminum current collector typically and for anodes we typically have copper current collector and uh, in between the, this 
these uh, cathode and anode particles, uh, all the empty space is being occupied by electrolyte. It could be liquid electrolyte or solid state. Now, uh, this is a typical structure. You can see various components like current collector, cathode, separator, anode, and then copper current collector. And all of these different components offer their own resistance. So you can see IR is a summation of ionic resistance of electrolyte, which is typically a liquid, plus electronic resistances of solids, which would be cathode, anode, separator, uh, current collector, and terminals. Cathode and anode can be combinedly called as electrode. So I hope this clarifies uh, the breakdown of, breakdown of internal resistance. Now let's look at how the resistive model works in the background. So you have terminal power, uh, which is the power applied at the terminals of the battery. Uh, so terminal power is same as the power demand which comes from the load. When you apply a load, the, the current flows through it, a voltage across the load times the current will give you power or terminal power. So power demand P is equal to summation of all the consumptions. So it would be auxiliary loads, motor losses, power electronic losses, any other miscellaneous losses uh, in, the, in the vehicle plus drive cycle demand. So drive cycle demand consists of vehicle losses in the form of uh, drive line loss, aerodynamic loss, rolling resistance losses of the vehicle, gradient losses, and so on. So OCV and IR is typically fixed for a cell or a pack once the chemistry is defined. For example, if you know your cell is made up of NCM, some form of NCM and graphite, then uh, more or less your OCB and IR is fixed. And these are typically a function of temperature and SOC. So OCB and IR is known, P is known. Well, what you are left with is these two equations. So we need we have OCV equals to V plus IR, terminal voltage plus current times internal resistance, P is equals to VI by Ohm's law. So uh, you have two equations and two unknowns, V and I, terminal voltage and current. And you can easily solve this equation uh, to get both these unknowns. So this is how resistive models works in the background which is one of the commonly used models in simulation. To finally conclude, let's look at an example to clarify further. Let's assume you have a vehicle which has a headlight on, which is consuming 50 watts. Motor uh, losses account for 100 watts. Cycle is demanding 1500 watts, 1500 watts to follow a certain velocity profile at a given instance and overcome all the vehicle resistances. Power electronic losses, let's assume, is 5 watt. Uh, so your overall power consumption, or the terminal power that the battery needs to supply, is summation of all this, which is 50 plus 100 plus 1500 plus 5, accounting for all these four losses, which gives 1655 watts. From uh, your supplier, battery supplier, you can get open circuit voltage and internal resistance of of the given cell you're working on. And it's defined as a function of temperature and SOC. So let's assume we are operating at 25 degree and the battery is fully charged. So open circuit voltage at the given operating point is 54.6, for instance, where we are assuming it's an NCM graphite cell, 4.2 is the upper cutoff voltage, or open circuit voltage at full SOC. We are using 13 cells in series, so 13 times 4.2 uh, gives you 54.6 because voltage adds up in series. IR uh, at the given operating point is, let's say, 0.1 ohm for your battery pack. 
So we have those two equations from the previous slide, OCV equals to V plus IR, P equals to VI. We'll plug in the values, P equals to VI, 1655, P is known, is equals to VI. So you can relate and get I equals to 1655 by V. The second equation, OCV equals to V plus IR, or I should say I times IR. Uh, uh, sometimes resistance is also denoted as R. It can also be used as IR. So it's it's uh, interchangeable. So you have OCV equals to V plus I times IR. Uh, we know OCV, we know IR at the given operating points. So we'll plug in those values 54.6 equals to V plus 0.1 I, which gives uh, the following re quadratic relation after plugging in this relation from the first equation. You can easily solve for this quadratic equation and get the roots. Uh, the one which is reasonable root, you can take it. In this case, uh, V comes out to be 51.37 and then you plug this value in this equation back to get I which gives you 32.2 amps. So this is how electrical equivalent model in this case, the resistor model works in the background based on the electrical equations. So hope this helps. Thanks for listening.